after time. Let's do it. Yeah. Mm. Boom. There it is. Yeah, you felt it. Good. I was about to have sex with this girl, and she's like, during sex, don't look at me. And I was like, hey, wasn't planning on it. Boom. <laughs> you get it. I was at the library the other day, or the homeless shelter. Is there a difference? I don't think so. Homeless people overtake the library. They get on the computer, update their Facebook statuses. I'm still homeless, LOL. Good status, buddy. My box is wet. Yeah, dog, it's been raining. I have glasses that are on my face. Boom. It's weird the first time you get intimate with a lady. I know it's weird to say intimate, because usually I say fuck her bone town. But you never know when to take off your glasses, because you don't want to take them off too soon and cock block yourself, right? So my rule is pants off, glasses off, right? I feel like that's fair. I like to look at the nipple, make sure that looks okay, then I leave. Also, uh... Shit. <laughs> If you get it on with somebody else's glasses, then your glasses are clanking together in some sort of nerd battle royale. Then you have to take a time out and find the nearest hard surface to put your glasses on. Because you don't want to wake up in the morning and break your glasses because there ain't no piece of ass worth $400. I'll tell you that much. Glasses are expensive. I feel like if you go to Hooters and your waitress is pregnant, your bill should be half off, right? That seems fair. She looks like an orange and white pumpkin or a piece of candy corn running loose in that bitch. You're like, not the pregnant one, not the pregnant one. Ah, oh, man, we got the pregnant one. Let's leave. This food is terrible. <laughs> also, I think people's sweaty hands need to stop shaking people's hands, okay? Sorry your hands, stupid, but it is, okay? Somehow you evolved wrong, all right? Sweat's supposed to come out of your armpit, not your hand, grossy. <laughs> People used to be monkeys. What sort of monkey needs a sweaty hand to climb a tree? Zero monkey. <laughs> don't get uptight, you know who you are. And if you don't, go home, put a piece of paper out and put your hand down. And if it leaves a big handprint, you know you gotta get fist pounds the rest of your life. That's how that works. I'm tired of shaking people's hands, feel like I put my hand in a swamp, and then I have to wait until you break eye contact and wipe it off on my jeans. What if it's the end of the world, stupid sweaty hand people, and the only food left is a jar of pickles, now you're freaking out. I don't know. <laughs> Don't fact check that, I said the word jar. Smash. Here's the rub, pickles don't have any nutrients, you're still gonna die. I hate you. I fly a lot. When I go to the airport, I lose my mind. As soon as I get through the security, right? I lose my shit. Like, I don't know why, like... Cause there's a part of me, like, I... I spend all my money, that's what happens. Cause there's a part of me that thinks my money might be on fire in like an hour in the field because we're playing fresh. So I'm just like, I'm going to buy a pretzel for $7 and a Coke for 3 and the dipping sauce for a dollar. Why not? It's going to be on fire. It's going to be on fire. And I flew a lot. I used to work at Delta Airlines. Right, I flew all the time for free. But the job had the drawback because you had to talk to people on the phone, which is way worse. You gotta talk to hillbillies and they hate time zones, makes their brain done hurt. <laughs> we had a flight left Cincinnati at 8 in the morning, arrived in Nashville at 7.54 a.m. There was always some jackass like, all right, buddy, you're telling me this flight leaves at 8 and it gets in at 7.54. Are you telling me this flight's going back in time? Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. Delta Airlines has invented a special new time travel program for dumbasses. So pack your duffel bag full of Mountain Dew socks and skull. Let's go, she did. <laughs> then people get confused by the flights that go out west. We had a flight leaving Cincinnati at 8. Got to Denver at 9, on the way back the flight left at 9 and got back at 1. They'd be like, alright man, you're telling me it takes an hour to get there, but 4 on the way back. Alright, bear with me sir, have you ever heard of a wormhole? It is a rip in the space-time continuum. Ready? Just pack your duffel bag. Is there any single ladies out there? One, alright, yeah. 
I'll sound cougar friendly, so rawr, old bitches. Rawr. I slept with a Jewish cougar once. I think they're called Jugers. Now, come on, everybody. I took two words and made a new one. I wear my creepy on the outside, everybody. Let my creep flag fly. Whoosh. Ladies, you gotta watch out for the guy who wears his creepy on the inside, because he gets you back to his place and he's pulling out nipple clamps. And they're not for you, they're for him. What? <laughs> Guys, don't let your lady fool you into going into a bed and breakfast weekend, alright? Those things are not romantic. Unless you have a fetish for having sex in your grandma's house, okay? That's what it's like. The floors are all creaky, and there's a bunch of rocking chairs and quilts, and those are boner killers, okay? It's gonna kill your bone. Just putting that out there. I've been dating a girl. Here's the thing, ladies, uh, if... I, I didn't know ladies get real angry when they don't eat, but they won't tell you that for some reason. It's just some sort of magical mystery game. You gotta feed them every once in a while. I feel like I should have like an iPhone app where I just type in the last time she ate, and then it's like green, yellow, and then it's just an angry face. I don't know why I have to figure it out. Like when I'm hungry, I just go eat, right? Somehow I gotta be the food genie or some shit. <laughs> Don't ever play this game with your girlfriend. Like on a scale of one to ten, how bitchy do you think you are? Because that will make her an eleven. She does not think that's funny. I do. <laughs> I went, I was at, uh, I wasn't in New York, people, but I went to a place called Sabaros or Sabaros or however you say shitty pizza. There I was. And I went up to the guy that's like, cheese pizza? And he goes, are you sure? When I said it out loud, that's usually the indicator of being sure about something. He goes, let me ask you this, would you go to an ice cream store and still order vanilla? And I'm confused because I'm confident I'm in a pizza place. <laughs> then it clicks in my brain that he's doing a sales technique called upselling me. <laughs> and I don't know what sort of incentive package Sabaro's employees have for selling green onions or pepperonis and they want a free trip to Italy. <laughs> but I want a part of this. I just want my lunch. So I hold my tray and stare at him until he breaks. <laughs> As you can see it in my eyes, I'm about to leave and just go to the Chinese restaurant and just yell the number out loud and get my food, alright? <laughs> 75, Diet Coke, done. No questions. <laughs> it's about timing, everybody. That's how it works. Ah, oh, shit, I missed that one. I missed that one. this one broad, she was going to invite me over to her house for sex. Boom. And we were on the phone, she said, hey Dave, I just want you to know I got some rambunctious dogs. And I was like, listen lady, I don't give a shit if you have a tiger in your kitchen or a giraffe on your front lawn. I'll get laid three times a year. Rambunctious dogs ain't stopping this fuck train. Choo choo! I will karate chop your dog. I'll throw your cat out the window and run your ferret over with a car. I don't give a shit. Maybe I should have put that on my E Harmony profile, but whatever. I got back here. Should have said that last part out loud. But it did. I do that online dating sometimes, right? Ladies write silly things on their profiles, like, I'm an outgoing lady looking for an outgoing guy. Whatever, girl, we are both on the internet at 11 o'clock on a Friday. <laughs> we are outgoing, be outgoing, doing something. <laughs> Ladies are deceptive with their pictures on the internet. You go in a coffee shop or a bar to meet a girl, you're excited, you get a good look at her, you're like, Ugh. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, still gonna fuck her, but you know. <laughs> Ladies need to class it up a little bit on the internet sometimes. You ever get on there and there's all sorts of skanky pictures on the lady's profile? It's like cleavage and more cleavage and then butt cleavage, which I'm on the fence about. But you're like, right, there it is. <laughs> And there's just a ton of those skanktified pictures you can't stop looking. And then all of a sudden it's a picture of her and her baby. All right, let's relax, okay? <laughs> I know you're looking for love, but you don't want your, you know, you don't want your kid coming in a couple years later like, Hey, new dad, how'd you meet mom? <laughs> well, I was trolling the internet for whores. <laughs> I saw your mom's picture, and I saw your picture, and I was like, well, with a rack like that, I'd be a little bastard like you. Now, <laughs> fetch me a beer, whatever your name is. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't learned a lot, but one thing I do know is I've never met a normal person that owns a ferret. Have you? No. <laughs> If you have a ferret, you probably don't have friends. <laughs> and you live in your mom's basement. And you can't wait until the next Renaissance Fair. Whatever nerdy <laughs> shit you were into. If you have a dude's house, like, hey buddy, why don't you put your long wiener dog rat thing away? Who the hell that is? Kind of smells. And your sword, Sandy. <laughs> People don't like that joke. Usually people that own ferrets. And maybe they're right, because there's people that own snakes. And if you own a snake, hate to break the news to you, you're a douche, yeah. Survey says douche. Snakes are creepy and don't do anything. Buy a painting of a snake, it does the same thing. Nothing. You ever go over to somebody's house, they have a snake, they're like, hey buddy, you want to see my snake? No. I don't. He's like, it's over here in the tank. Oh, that kind of snake. Still not. <laughs> snake was a dick, everybody. Come on. <laughs> Snakes do do something. They bite people. Most of the weirdos and hillbillies. I know this because there's a show on Animal Planet called Venom 911. And it's an hour long about weirdos and hillbillies getting bit by snakes. It's super awesome. <laughs> the weirdo part is some goth kid who owns a snake in a ferret. He takes it, they take them out, both out at the same time, and the snake flips his shit and bites his hand. That's fine. But the hillbilly part's always my favorite because it's just some jackass out in the woods. He's like, well, I saw a hole in the ground and I figured I'd put my hand in there. <laughs> no. There's not gold in there. There's not oil in there, Jed Clampett. Best case scenario, groundhog, and that thing's still gonna bite it. Don't be rooting around in holes. In the woods, anyways. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Hey. Talking about pussy. Huh? How much time am I supposed to do? I'm having a lot of fun. Am I done? All right. <laughs> Used up all my good shit and I can't figure out a big way to get out of here. I'm just kidding. I have a ton of good shit. I'm super funny. <laughs> you ever see that commercial for the hover round? That's a scooter for old people. And in that commercial it says the hover round. Where are you going to go next? Well, let's be honest, Grandpa, after the casino, the grave. <laughs> in that commercial, it shows him at the Statue of Liberty. We live here in New York. We all know the Statue of Liberty doesn't have an elevator, okay? That commercial is fucking up the line, okay? Those things don't actually hover off the ground, everybody. That's what I'm saying. You stay up real late, you get to see Dirty Commercial. So there is a commercial on cable for the Trojan Vibrating Touch, which is a buzz buzz for the lady thing, if you know I'm driving it. <laughs> All right. And in the commercial, there's two young ladies talking about the big O, and behind them there's an old bag who looks like Angela Lansbury from Murder, She Wrote. And this dustbuster leans over and she goes, Hey, you can order the Vibrating Touch on the internet, and that is when I throw up in my mouth. <laughs> I don't need to know that old lady is flicking her bean on her hover. 
She's <laughs> coming, Jesus. She's coming from the sex and the dying, everybody. Come on, it's a combo trip. I doubled up on it. Hey, thanks a lot, y'all been super awesome. Thank you. Hey, wait, everybody, keep it going for Dave one more time. Dave, come on now. All right, folks, we're going to just settle in.